Welcome everyone. Uh, my name is Julia. I'm uh, hosting today from Product Management Festival our um, 30th edition of PMF Connect. Um, and before I introduce our uh, special guest for today, I just want to share shortly why Product Management Festival is hosting these things, what else we do and how you can benefit from all our um, other initiatives. And then I'm just gonna get out of your way so you can enjoy the presentation today. So PMF um, has several initiatives, probably you know most of them. We publish every year a um, report, which spoiler is going to come out soon. Um, so this report is based on a survey we send out to a few thousand product managers throughout the world. So we gather information which is really uh, useful for product managers, product leaders like you. Basically, you can find out which is the average salary in your country for your position. So maybe uh, use it as a tool to get a raise or why not even look for another position. Find out what's the best way to structure your team find out which are the new tools product managers are using. Um, by the way, I forgot to mention that today's session is sponsored by Mixpanel. So that's a great tool you can also use. Uh, we're gonna find out more about that shortly from Paolo, our guest today. And um, other things you can benefit from uh, as a product manager using our network are the local events we do starting from uh, this month more and more in person throughout the world as well. So we have uh, coming up a product management night in Zurich, a product management night uh, in Milano. Tomorrow there's actually an event happening in person in Amsterdam and uh, Sofia. Um, if you have um, a uh, budget to come to our conference. There's uh, one happening in November, 9th, 10th of November. We have over 1,000 product managers uh, joining, over 50 speakers. There's also an opportunity for you to attend even if you don't have a budget. So we every year we encourage uh, people to apply as volunteers. It's a great experience. It will probably change your uh, professional life for sure. Uh, it's renowned to be a place where people get to change their jobs. As you know, there's Google in Zurich, they're always recruiting. Uh, so keep that in mind. Uh, if you are a product leader or an aspiring product leader and uh, the product itself is no longer your only focus, but you have to also deal with the team motivate people, make sure that these people build the right things inside the, the product, then I'm sure that you have discovered that you need a new set of skills. And that's why we have two initiatives, three actually, three initiatives we are um, doing to help you. Uh, these are uh, executive insights. It's um, basically uh, an online, a session similar to this one with um, product leaders who we have even transitioned into uh, being CEOs or managing directors. Uh, they are there to answer any questions you have. So join those. We do product executive circles throughout the world, uh, which are uh, super, um, restricted um, group of people, up to 10 maximum product leaders who come together and speak. These are not recorded. It's a safe space where you can really share your problems and see how others have done it. Uh, it's our little uh, therapy group for product leaders. And um, we also have a um, executive program which we do with the business school inside who's renowned to have the best MBA uh, in the world for the last three years I think at least so we um, use their knowledge to bring skills leadership skills to PMs and we have a lot of guest lectures from different companies who are there to 
teach specifically product leadership skills. So basically this program helps you strengthen your leadership skills and your product leadership skills. So you can maybe advance to a CPO position, VP of product or um, just do a better job into leading your team to build successful products. And um, I will leave you with uh, just an encouragement to join uh, our conference. We have team discounts. The, as I've mentioned, the next edition is in Zurich, 9th, 10th of November. At least once in your product manager life, you have to join. It's uh, an amazing experience. So reach out to us for any questions. Uh, and the, with that being said, I would like to leave the floor to our guest today. Um, Paolo Sabatinelli is the head of product at Immobiliare.it uh, um, and he actually was saying earlier that the Immobiliare is just like TikTok, which was a, a very uh, bold, funny statement. And I let him explain what the, the similarities and differences are. So Paolo, thank you very much for joining. Thank you, Mix Panel, for organizing uh, this uh, amazing session. And let's get started. Thanks for the intro. Hi, everyone. I'm Paolo, uh, and I'm going to share my screen. Um, so I'm the head of product in, uh, in Immobiliare, and I'm responsible for the product management and uh, the, the product design team. Um, so today, um, I will, I mean, just a few words about myself. Um, so I joined Immobiliare uh, one year ago, and um, my mission is to build a great product, a great product team, and to foster a strong product culture in the organization, uh, adopting a lean approach to build products that our customers love. Easy. Uh, so today I will talk about a simple problem and as any other simple problem, uh, it requires a simple solution. And the solution needs to be validated as soon as possible. So this is not rocket science, it's a, just a applying the right methodology uh, and the right tool. Uh, so that's why having a product analytics tool uh, and having mixed panel uh, is a must have for us in order to solve uh, this common problem and to shape uh, a good product strategy. So what's the problem? Uh, we want to boost the engagement of our users, so the searchers. Then this is an area with a high level of ambiguity and uh, it's, it's extremely easy to fail. So that's why we need to be more accurate on what to build and how to invest the time of our engineering teams. Um, the solution uh, is uh, building a good product strategy and validate this strategy as soon as possible. So, Let's see how, what we did. Um, so first of all, um, who we are? Uh, we are a tech company. Uh, Immobiliare is a tech company, one of the few tech companies in Italy, by the way. Our DNA is about building platforms uh, within a specific vertical, which is the real estate. Uh, we operate in different European countries with different brands. The most important ones are Immobiliare.it for Italy and Indomio for Spain and Greece. And also Luxury State, which, which offers the largest selection of luxury properties uh, uh, at the global level. Um, okay, just some vanity metrics. I mean, uh, I, need to <laughs> I need to explain a little bit uh, in terms of traffic uh, who we are. So we are a um, heavily traffic platform. So we have uh, 15 millions of MAU and 1.2, 1.3 millions of daily active users. And we have almost 200 millions of uh, listings viewed uh, per month. So if you consider that in Italy there are 60 millions of people, one citizen over four every month uh, use our product. And in Italy, our app is placed as number six on the most downloaded app just after Amazon and Tinder. So we are a well-known platform used heavily by, um, by our users in our country. Uh, this is our playground. So we are a two-sided platform. On one side, there are users interested on viewing a content, while on the other side, there are users interested on publishing or promoting a content. So that's why we are, that's the reason why we are similar to TikTok. At the end of the story, I mean, the two actors are the same. 
However, in our scenario, we have an additional actor, uh, which are the private sellers. So those users interested on selling their own houses. Um, so which is, what, what is our value unit? Uh, these are the leads. Okay, the leads that we have- Can I interrupt you for a second, just to ask you if you can maybe try to make your screen a bit uh, bigger? We're, uh, I just see a part of it. So I think there's super, yeah, that's, that's great okay. and maybe- just uh, yeah, excellent. Um, maybe uh, yes. okay. Excellent. Thank you so much. Okay, sorry. Um, so basically, how we monetize? Um, we monetize via the extra visibility that we are selling to the users interested on publishing their contents. So if you want to appear on top of the result page, you need to invest a little bit more than the others. Okay, so that's why it's important to, uh, to demonstrate how relevant it is to appear on top of the, of the result page, how, uh, via the, the number of contacts and we are capable to generate to the specific, to, for that specific publisher. So that's why the contact and the leads are the value unit for our platform. Um, this is our game, okay? So, as per any other marketplace, uh, our focus is about the network effect, uh, which is linked to the level of reputation of our platform. So the, the game is quite simple. So more users we are capable to, to attract, higher is the um, propensity of having more listings from the publishers, and higher is the number of listings higher is the number of uh, potential users interested on uh, accessing on our platform. So the network effect at the end is a balance between quantity and quality. For this specific, uh, let's say, use case, uh, we want to focus on uh, the number of leads. So in order to maximize the number of leads, we need to improve the level of engagement of our, of our users. So let's see how we are uh, tackling this, uh, this problem. Um, let's see some peculiarities of our platform. So as I was mentioning before, uh, we are in a sense similar to social media platform like TikTok or, uh, or Facebook, but there is a big difference in terms of necessity and frequency. What does it mean frequency? I mean, on TikTok, you access every three minutes probably, uh, but is necessary for your life? Maybe not. Okay, um, let's see other, uh, other platforms like on-demand streaming, like Netflix or grocery food delivery. Uh, they have a frequency which is on a daily basis or on a weekly basis. While for another category of platforms like OTA or accommodation sharing, you have a frequency of three, four, five times per year. Um, on, the, on one hand, there are the job posting platforms. So how often you change your job? Maybe once every three, four years. But what about buying a house? So you buy a house maybe one, two, three times if you're lucky in your life. But sooner or later, you need to make this step. So that's why our platform uh, is defined as a very low frequency, but high necessity platform. Um, so which are the, the problems of having these uh, uh, low frequency flow? Um, the value of unit, uh, as we said before, are the contacts, but the propensity of influencing the, the contact is, uh, is complex because there are so many variables on uh, uh, contacting a house and deciding to visit a house, which is uh, really, really complex and challenging to influence the users on making this action. So we need to individuate another metric which we can easily influence. And we identified the MLV, so the number of listings viewed, uh, the total number of listings viewed per user in a month. With the assumption that higher is the number of listings that you visit, higher is the propensity of contacting an agent or an agency. So now we are entering into the, the discovery game, okay? So we need to validate this assumption in order to define a strategy and boosting the engagement of our users. So as any other uh, product market fit uh, uh, game, we, start, we started from our users and we use Mixpanel as the main tool to understand how our users behave 
and how we can, uh, I mean, how we can find some correlations or interesting patterns in order to take some actions. So at the end of the story, uh, we started from uh, defining the distribution of our users based on the number of listings viewed in a month. So you can see here on top the, the distribution. After um, in Mixpanel, we created different segments, uh, artificial segments, uh, which are more or less aligned with this distribution. Um, they better represent this distribution. And after this, uh, we measured finally for the, for the first time, the correlation between uh, the number of listings viewed in a month and the propensity of contacting an agency. So this is the key for us. And now we need to validate as quick as possible this assumption. So what is important here on this, uh, on this report uh, is the fact that we are now capable to isolate a very specific segment of the population what we call the power users. And now the next step of this discovery oh. game is about, is about, <laughs> is about to find which are those characteristics that make, that make the power users so powerful. So why they are so special compared to the other users of our platform. Um, so we spend a couple of, uh, let's say, months on uh, uh, analyzing all the events that we have implemented in Mixpanel, uh, figuring out uh, which are the strongest uh, correlation between events and these power users. So at the end of this exercise, uh, um, by the way, this is an, an iterative exercise. I still running, but I mean, these are the first insights. We have figured out that the power users have three uh, key characteristics uh, that differentiate themselves compared to the others. So first, the first one is uh, the ratio, the registration ratio. So the power users are much more registered than the other, the other users, especially compared to the less engaged users. As you can see, the, the power users have a split of 50-50%, while the less engaged users, uh, only the 4% of them are registered on our platform. So the second characteristics is about how skilled these users are on using the tools that we are giving them during the discovery process. And when we talk about tools, uh, I'm referring about filters and the capability of searching over a map. So what we discovered is that the power users uh, use much more filters than the rest of the population. And also what we have seen is that the power users are more inclined on using the feature draw an area on a map uh, rather than the, the uh, rest of the population. So this is uh, um, interesting for us. And this is giving us a direction, which means that um, if we are capable to make these features much more um, accessible to the rest of the population, from a probabilistic point of view, we are capable to transform or convert more users or on becoming much more powerful than before. And there is an interesting element of talking about the feature drawing an area on a map. Um, we all know that personalization is a key booster for retention, right? I mean, we see in every platform that we are using. For our platform, the possibility of draw, drawing your own area is uh, what we call a sticky feature. So once that you have created your own area, you are much more retained on uh, using our platform more often. As you can see here on this report uh, on Mixpanel, the yellow line are, uh, is the level of retention for those users who have created their own uh, area over the last seven days. So you see that their level of retention is comparable to the retention of the power users. So this is a really insightful uh, uh, element for us, which is giving us a clear direction on investing more on this feature in the future. There is a, the, a third area, a third characteristics of the power user which is the adoption of, uh, 
of the primary channel. So in Immobiliare, we have three main channels, mobile app, uh, web desktop, and web mobile. So what we see here is that for the power users, the mobile app is the primary channel. So almost the 60% of uh, uh, the power users use uh, the mobile app on a regular basis. While for the less engaged users, uh, the, the mobile app is representing only the 20, 20, 23%, while the most adopted channel is mobile web. So this is another great direction that we are obtaining from this analysis, which is telling us that the, the mobile app is a tremendous tool which boosts the level of uh, the quality of the traffic. So one objective obviously is to invest on moving users from one channel to the mobile app. So at the end of the story, uh, what we discovered is nothing else than a series of uh, directions that we can define as objectives. And uh, thanks to Mixpanel, we are capable to identify uh, a series of metrics which could be related to a set of key results to uh, attach to every objective. So at the end of the story, we have used this exercise not only to uh, understand how our users behave, but also to shape a strategy behind this specific area of our platform, which is the growth area of our platform. So, I mean, uh, con consider that we integrated mixed panel on December. Um, after two months, we arrived to the first uh, iteration of this uh, process. And now it's important, was important to validate all this assumption. Um, at that time, uh, all the engineering teams were already allocated on working on other initiatives. So we didn't have uh, any engineers available, but we needed to validate this assumption. So what we did, so we individuated one specific objective and we started from the objective num number three. And we challenge ourselves asking, okay, but what can we do uh, in order to uh, convert these users without having engineers, okay? And, and the solution was quite uh, simple, uh, but also very interesting. So together with Mixpanel, we, uh, on December, we had also integrated Brace, uh, which is a customer engagement tool. And the beauty of uh, Mixpanel and Brace is the fact that it's very, very simple to uh, integrate them together. And once you have integrated, you can do things that, I mean, uh, five years ago were almost impossible or where you needed many, many engineers. Um, so the, the action plan was quite simple. So in mixed panel, we have identified a specific segment of users. So those active users who didn't have the mobile app installed, we passed this uh, um, these segment to, to Brace. In Brace, we have created multiple campaigns based on different uh, triggers or uh, frequency. And on Mixpanel, we are capable to track the performance of these uh, campaigns. So in a nutshell, just to better I mean, explain this flow, uh, we were capable to uh, get the most out of the integration between these two tools and we were incredibly effective on being able to uh, iterate and optimize the conversion of this campaign. All of this without having engineers. So we as product manager and product designer, we were completely independent on creating value. And this is awesome. Um, so at the end, uh, what we obtain from these uh, uh, activities? This is the dashboard that we have created in Mixpanel, uh, which shows the, uh, the different the campaigns and how the different campaigns perform. So as you can see, I mean, the, uh, some of them are still live campaigns because we are continuously moving users from one channel to another, trying to promote our apps and the key features of our app. Uh, but some campaigns uh, have been stopped simply because they were not converting as we were expecting. So we were incredibly fast on making this iteration because, I mean, it was 
was made within the team. Um, so at the end, what we achieved from these uh, uh, set of uh, campaigns, three main results. So the first one is that since the beginning of this campaign, we targeted more or less 200,000 users and we converted uh, almost, I mean, at least the 25%. So 50K users now are mobile app users. Um, second result, uh, we measure a, a significant shift in the way how traffic now is split for these users that we have targeted. So for example, before the adoption of mobile app was the 9%, now is uh, almost the 26%. Uh, third result, maybe the most uh, relevant one, is that uh, we, in Mixpanel, we are capable to track how these users that we have converted behave. And we have verified the initial assumption at the beginning of this, uh, of this story. So the fact that once a user is using the mobile app, this user uh, became much more engaged in terms of a number of listings viewed and also propensity of contacting an, an agent. And this is, uh, I mean, the results uh, as, we, as we see them in, in Mixpan. So as you can see here, we started this campaign on February and this is the, uh, the new users using the, the mobile app. So now we are more or less on a 50, 50K users at least. And below you can see the, the split in terms of traffic. So the green, uh, the light green, uh, let's say area represent the amount of traffic generated by the mobile app. So at the beginning of February was uh, below 10% and now is more than 25%. But as I mentioned before, these are the most relevant results. Uh, this report represents the, the users before and after the uh, adoption of mobile app. So the after are those lines uh, with, with streams and the, uh, the bold line, the bold uh, say, yeah, lines are the, uh, represent the users after using the mobile app. As you can see, we have seen a, a significant shift in terms of uh, number of listings viewed, I mean, plus 68%. And also we have seen uh, a shift, an increase in terms of a number of contacts sent by the same user, uh, which is plus 42%. So just to say, complete the story uh, and to say, uh, make a recap. So at the end, at the beginning, we have these, uh, these problems. So we know, I mean, we have some, we had some feelings. We knew more or less what to do, but we didn't have the capability of measuring uh, how our users behave and uh, we didn't have the uh, capability of uh, making a data-driven decision. After the introduction of, uh, of Mixpanel, finally, we were capable to measure. And once you can measure, you can uh, uh, make assumption that you can easily validate. So this is how we started. And uh, uh, talking about task, uh, we decided to focus on uh, monthly listing build because contacts are complex to, to influence um, with the assumption that if we are capable to influence the number of listings that you see, um, we are going to increase the propensity of uh, uh, contacting an agency. The action that we took was to, okay, let's attack one of the three objectives that we have identified, identified in order to validate the assumption rapidly. Uh, so that's why, thanks to the integration between the Mixpanel and Brace, we launched a series of campaigns. The results uh, are exactly uh, aligned with the original assumption. But most important, we have uh, validated this assumption collecting, collecting real qualitative data on Mixpanel. And this gave to all of us the confidence for investing more and having more engineering teams on those areas 
that we have seen before in order to maximize the level of engagement of our users. And that's all. Thank you very much. I hope that was a, a cool story and uh, you can replicate uh, something like that in the future in your, in your job. Thank you so much, Paolo. For sure, it was full of interesting uh, data points and somebody was asking if they can um, receive uh, access to your slides after the presentation. Um, Maybe. Let's see. I mean, <laughs> let, <laughs> I need to, let's say, clean up some uh, numbers or percentages, but uh, yeah, 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 it's fine. Um, so, to answer your question, G, for sure the, you will be able to see again the recording. Um, and uh, now let's take some of your questions. Fabian, I think you had a question regarding tracking the users over months. Do you want to ask it live to Paulo? Yes, I can do that. So, <laughs> uh, hello. And thanks a lot. It was a really interesting uh, talk. Uh, I had the, the question at the beginning. You after that you talked a little bit about uh, the, the push the users to to register. But you mentioned you based your your assumption on the general data uh, which which you analyzed uh, this uh, listing over months. And I'm really wondering how you track that because in my experience. Uh, yeah, browser score go more strictly and are more strictly and you can track, it's hard to track the users over several months. And how, how you do that, how you solve this problem that, that it's hard to track the user over several months that you can then measure your key metric. Um, yeah, this is one of the key characteristics of having a product analytics platform. Um, so, for example, in our case, Mixpanel is capable to track uh, the, the uh, actions and uh, the events, uh, even for those users who are not registered, uh, because basically it uh, creates a unique identifier uh, for for your specific uh, for 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 you, even if you're not uh, uh, an immobiliary.it registered users. And obviously, uh, if you next time you are accessing on Immobiliare in incognito mode, obviously we are going to create another unique identifier. So that's why the, the reason why we need to move more and more users to be registered is also, uh, is also another effect, which is uh, about cleaning or making, uh, let's say, the the overall uh, analysis and behaviors that we are collecting less polluted by these uh, noise. Thanks a lot. Cool, if you have any other questions, please write them in the chat. Um, take advantage of uh, us having today Paolo here who can share a bit of his uh, experience with implementing and getting these amazing results with Mixpanel. Um, my question um, was, Paolo, to you regarding the, so how much, um, I, I see you're super data proficient, uh, how much, uh, how many resources do you need in the team um, to look at uh, this data and analyze it? Is it like, do you have data analysts or is the tool um, facilitating product managers to act as data analysts? So uh, if you can share a bit about your team structure and um, what kind of resources you needed to yeah. implement this. So uh, about the answers, how many additional resources uh, we needed to acquire or hire in order to properly use Mixpanel, the answer is zero, okay? Uh, because I believe that being able to be a data savvy or being able to man use and manipulate this data is, has to be a key characteristics of any product manager. But obviously, the tool per se uh, doesn't need to be too complex. Otherwise, uh, you don't have time or focus on uh, running all the other 
product managers' activities. And this is to me one of the key elements of differentiation of mixed panel, which at the end of the story is a simple tool. I mean, it's not complex at all. The only, let's say, learning is about the data model of your platform. But anyhow, I mean, uh, independently by the tool, I believe that any product managers need to be aware on how we are collecting and how we are structuring the events and properties on our platform. Uh, for sure, uh, we invested on uh, training ourselves. So within the team, we have a regular training meetings, uh, both with Bigspanner, but also internally, uh, where, where we need to continuously improve ourselves uh, and being able to be uh, even more sensible on how to properly use mixed panel for finding these correlations or finding these patterns. But I mean, the adoption of this tool uh, was very natural for us. So it's a, it's a key platform uh, that every product managers, but also product designers, uh, needs to be capable to use. Cool, thank you. Um, we have a question from Mattia. Mattia, would you like to ask your question out live? So his question is, um, can you please talk a little bit more on how did you find your power users? I think it's the key step for replicating the journey you took. So how did you find your power users? Uh, yes, um, the first step is to define a focus metric, okay? So in our case, the focus metric is the number of contacts, but as we have seen before, um, it's too risky to focus on this metric because it's very complex to influence it. So imagine if you see a house, how many variables there are behind the propensity of contacting an agency to visit that house. I mean, uh, it's impossible to, uh, to predict. So that's why we prefer to focus on uh, another metric. Uh, the, the number of listings that you are visiting per month. So based on this metric, we have uh, uh, measured the distribution and we have isolated those users who have the highest number of visits per month. This is for us uh, the, the power users. And uh, starting from this point, we started to pivot around this uh, segment of users to individuate which were the features of the or the characteristics that made them so powerful. Cool. Um, Barbara, you have a question? Um, yeah. If I may add on what you just said, because your half uh, answer was given already, uh, I was wondering, because I'm in the moment where we are introducing some tracking. Uh, to our platform. The platform is just about to go live and we have to do trade-offs. We are not going to track everything because we can. Uh, so we are placing our bets in the areas uh, because of our expertise in area, we, we know somewhere there will be some, some good uh, insights. I was wondering how was your strategy towards uh, implementing the tracking with Mixpanel? And did you track everything like a list from A to Z and just track everything? Or did you identify some uh, key areas that you prioritized first, which then you, of course, use to identify the behavior of power users? Great question. Um, the answer is always the same answer. And this is the beauty of uh, our job, that at the end, we need to apply the same methodology for different uh, actions. So in our case, we are still implementing Mixpanel because we have so many events that, I mean, uh, requires so much time for covering all of them. So we decided to start from the same point, the same point discussed before. Okay, let's start from the focus metric. So the most important uh, uh, element uh, in our platform. So from the value unit, uh, we defined uh, a specific set of events in order to track it and a set of property. And after we went down on defining the second level events that we wanted to track. And after we went down defining the 
third level of events that we want to track and so on, so on. So at the end of the story, we build a, a backlog uh, including all the, the events that we want to track as, as a good product managers, we have prioritized this backlog based on the value of the, the different events. And we work together with, uh, with the developers in order to implement these, uh, these events over a roadmap of uh, four months, which is still running, by the way. Thank you very much. Cool. Uh, Shivam, uh, you had a simple question. Uh, you want to ask it live? Yeah, hi. Uh, I'm not sure, can you see me? Yes, yes, we can see you and hear Wait. you clearly. Hi. Thank you. Hi. Uh, thanks, Paolo, first of all, for the presentation. It was really helpful. And I think the question sounds simple, but it's not really simple. I, I feel there are lots of product managers out there. Sorry for the discussion. No worries. I feel there are lots of product managers out there who really feel, who really work based on their gut feelings. You know, like they, they come up with hypotheses uh, just from the assumptions that they have in their mind, which is, of course, really important to be a gifted product manager and then they try to validate it based on numbers you know and then to get the buy-in from sponsors and why don't we i mean why don't we actually go the other way around why don't we actually derive a hypothesis from the analytics i mean you you can already work on it you know you can already get the data from from the past and based on that you could also make decisions you know based on that you could make your hypothesis so what's your say on that? Uh, I mean, maybe you see from a linear perspective, but I see from a, a loop perspective. So I agree with you. I mean, in order to validate our hypothesis, uh, we are capable to measure the past. And uh, being able to measure the past, obviously we need to let's say, make some assumptions and uh, we need to be uh, lean on being able to verify this assumption for the present and the future as soon as possible. So if we have these uh, hypotheses validated, which are more or less aligned on the, let's say, previous behaviors of the past, okay, maybe there is a strong correlation. So maybe we can proceed further on a deep diving on the specific hypothesis. So at the end of the story is a, a continuous loop, a, a continuous uh, iterative uh, model. Um, so, I mean, I don't see any big difference on, uh, let's say, on the point that you made. Do you, do you think the definition of power users that you define as of today may change for you in a couple of months or a year from now? Absolutely. I mean, these uh, analysis or this strategy uh, is not finished and it's evolving continuously. For example, um, one of the assumptions that they made at the beginning is to create 10 different segments. Was a good assumption? Was the best assumption possible? Probably not, but it's a way for starting from proceeding to the next step. Um, we, are, we need to calibrate those 10 segments. And now, for example, we are deep diving a little bit more also adding qualitative elements to that quantitative ones. And we figure out that we don't need 10 segments. Maybe we could have a better segmentation or considering five different segments because uh, there are not significant difference from the user perspective. So it's a continuous uh, activity, this one about uh, analyzing uh, as well to define a strategy. Another thing, no? So we have seen uh, a framework which gives us a direction on how to invest uh, the time of uh, um, a specific uh, set of teams of our engineers. But this is just for the first six months. So if you are not capable to achieve the objectives that now we have defined, maybe the strategy was not good enough and we need to change the approach, change the objectives as well, change the, the key results. Let's see. Thanks a lot. Can I ask one more question quickly? Sure. Yeah, I just wanted to also know, like, have you already looked into defining the personas group for your product so far? 
or right now as i see only power users but have you have you distinguished them into more different cohorts based on what they do in life probably um yes obviously this is something that we considered but uh now it's uh, a too expensive activity and we don't know exactly what will be the value of investing time on defining persona now so first of all we need to catch the low hanging fruits and to start from the power users to see why they're so special and trying to easily influence the others to become power users once that we are losing traction of course we need to deep dive a little bit more and deep dive uh, for me is uh, adding uh, more qualitative elements which means start to think about persona personas with different needs with different uh, let's say uh, being able to uh, give them uh, offer them a different value proposition based on different the different stage of the user journey so it's something that will arrive but for now we prefer to focus on the low hanging fruits. Awesome, thanks a lot. Great, um, if there are no more questions, we are going to close. So I'm gonna speak slowly in case anybody wants to ask one last question, Paolo. Um, before we close, I just want to uh, let you know that we um, are going to raffle a ticket to product management festival for the people who signed up to attend this uh, meeting. So watch out for an email announcing that we will do it after. Um, I want to also let you know that we have uh, another session for PMF Connect next week. And with that being said, um, that's all from me, Paolo. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for the insights. We're gonna share the videos, maybe the slides. And um, yeah, if you uh, have any questions to Paolo, is it okay if people reach out directly to you, for example, on LinkedIn or any other media on TikTok? <laughs> <laughs> I needed to to cancel uh, TikTok. Uh, <laughs> no, of course. I mean, I'm joking. Uh, yeah, please. I mean, send me a, every uh, question that you have in mind uh, on LinkedIn or any other channels that you are capable to find me. Because I mean, um, what we have seen today is uh, it's it's a methodology that uh, could be applied for different. Uh, for different areas on product management. Today we have seen for shaping a strategy, but uh, could be applied also for uh, solving other customers' problems. So any question would be valuable and for sure would be interesting for me in order to learn uh, uh, even more, even more from that. So, and it was a pleasure to join today. So thank you very much. Thank, thanks for the opportunity and see you next time. Thank you, everyone. Um, thank you as well, Nick's panel, for facilitating our conversation today with Paolo. If you have any questions on the platform or implementation or any question whatsoever, reach out to us, to Paolo, and we will be glad to help. Um, yeah, I wish you a productive day and see you at the next PMF Connect. Bye. Thanks. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye.